So with this video, I wanted to take a look at creating a customized title screen. Now, Unity has a built-in GUI that allows for the creation of menus and title screens, splash pages, things like that. But if you're looking for something a little more customizable, something that you have absolute control over, particularly stylistic control, you're probably going to want to do it yourself because there's a certain look to the GUI for Unity and you really have to uh, make a lot of modifications to it to give it a distinctive look. So let's do a couple of things. So first of all, your background is just that, a background. We'll use this one, this is the correct size. So say you like want to have a weapon on your screen. So you just drag and drop that into your asset area and then drag and drop it into your main your uh, what's going to be your title screen scene click on the main camera just to see how it looks for size way off so we'll click on the title image at the bottom and the asset itself and then with pixels per unit the smaller this number the larger the image and that's because it's a ratio so let's drop that down to 70 get rid of map maps that way we can uh, compress it and then hit apply that's much better but we'll go a little bit further yeah, it's good enough so that easy to put a background image by default when you put an object into a scene it's ordered in the layer zero which is fine because this would be the object that's furthest in the back. We just have to make sure that the subsequent objects are a higher number, where it'd be one, two, three. So let's go to game object. Let's go to create empty. Add. And we're going to do a mesh and do a text mesh. Character size, drop that down to 0.15. You can anything in that range 0 0.15, 0 0.2, anything bigger than than that and it gets blurred for some reason. Now, okay, so we've done that, so let's copy this and we want three of them. Okay, we'll call this title text. And for font, this is going to be way up there, like 64. And use the name of a project I'm working on. Now, if you notice, it's behind that, the, uh, the background image. So basically, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to attach a script that brings it forward which is easy enough we have to attach a script anyways for a few other reasons so this one is going to be start text change the text to read start and its font size is going to be half as big. And then one more time. Whoops, I double click so it zoomed in. Sorry about that. We might not actually do the load functionality because that has to deal with uh, saving first. And that in itself is really a tutorial. And another one would possibly be options, that kind of thing. As well as any other top level menu, like sometimes there's uh, watch intermissions that you've already encountered, things like that. So let's quickly view that to see how that's looking. Okay. So let's bring that one down a bit. Bring that one down. 
So let's start prepping some of these objects for interaction with the player. So in order to detect a mouse click, because that's what we're going to use, we need to add a box collider. You can trim, if you click on Edit Collider, you can shrink in the borders, but this is really just looking at the broad strokes. Now what we're going to do is we need to add a script. can do this a couple ways. You can either just drag and drop them individually or you can highlight everything that needs to have it attached. Drag and drop it once and then you'll see that it is on all of them. Let's go into that script. And outside of the update section, so it needs to be its own routine, And just to make sure it's working, we're going to do a quick debug log and type in success. And it read success down there. We can get rid of, and eh, we'll just mark that out for the moment. Now, because the same script is attached to two different objects, we have to have the script determine which object is being clicked on. Because if this one is clicked on, then we want it to do one set of functions. If this one's being clicked on, we want it to do an entirely different set of functions. You do that by looking at the name of the object. So, if game object dot name double equal sign and then just put in the name of the object start text now what you would do here is we're going to put in a command that says to load the level. So what we're going to do is first we need to save this as a scene. We'll call it title. And there it's saved as title. And now what we'll do is we'll create a new scene. We're not going to put anything in it, though. And we'll call this, say, level 1. Go up to File. Go to Build Settings. And for a load command to work, the scene needs to be added to the build. So we'll do Add Current. Close. Go back to title. Build settings. Add current. You can just drag and drop if you want the order to be different. Now the reason why I did that is so we can actually put this in. And this is really one of the biggest, most important 
bits of code for this because this is how you actually travel from the title screen to wherever it is that you're going. So application dot load level and then you just put in the name of the level. And we called it level one I believe. Yep. And we'll test this. So what's gonna happen is the screen should go blank because there's nothing in that. But that'll tell us that we've gone to the new scene. So we're gonna run this. We'll click on start. And sure enough, it went blank, so we're actually in um, level one now. Now let's go ahead and bring everything to the front like we mentioned. So we go back to our script, and in the start section, I'm gonna use a good old standby get component and its renderer. Sorting order. And you just say what order it should be. We'll say five, just in case there's a couple other layers in between. Save that. So as you can see currently, the blade is over the text. We run it, and now the text is over that. Let's just increase that a little bit. Make it a little bit more evident. Now what we're going to do is usually there's some kind of effect when you highlight, or should I say, when you mouse over. Maybe the image gets bigger, maybe it changes color. So let's just review a couple ones like that. So that's a separate routine. So it needs to be outside of the other routines. You need to be outside of void, outside of mouse down, it is its own. So void on mouse over. And for this, we'll use get components. And it'll be text mesh would be color let's give it kind of like Point four, and since it's a decimal, you have to use the letter F, else it gets confused. Now, again, because this script is attached to even the title at the top, it would have that effect, and we don't want it to. So, you, once again, you have to check. make sure only that one is being affected. The way around is you could have a separate script attached to this one. Entirely your choice. I try to minimize scripts. Your preference may be to have more scripts but have them be more focused. It's purely designed this type of game. It's going to have no meaningful impact on performance. And there, just like that, mouse over. But now when the mouse moves, color stays, which you don't want. So that's where we get to the next one. I'm just going to paste this to save a little bit of time. So just as this routine was on mouse over, this one is on mouse exit. And you just set the color back to one. Save this. Yeah.